is a shout in you somewhere. If you stand up, it'll come out a little bit better. If you wave your hand, that shout will come out. Shout and say hallelujah, hallelujah. Anyhow, God bless you, praise team. Oh, yeah. Let's be blessed this morning. God is good. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? And is it true that you are thinking of me? Oh, how you love me. It's amazing. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. And is it true that you are thinking of me? Woo! Oh, how you love me. Hey! It's amazing. Come on, say yeah. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. you love me when you call. Hey, come on, say. And is it true that you are thinking of me? Hey, oh, how you love me. It's amazing.
careful who, who your friends are. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for this time of worship. Thank you, praise team, for uh, getting us stirred up and started. We are here to worship the Lord in spirit as well as in truth. Uh, if you're here uh, in person, I want to thank you for making the sacrifice and getting up and getting ready and coming out to the house of God. Uh, maybe more of you should do the same thing. You know, we're here, we're practicing good uh, social distancing. We have our masks on, and we get our temperature taken just before we come in, and then we're nicely spaced out in the pews. So we thank God for the opportunity to yet be in worship. Yes, Amen. That was a time when the devil was trying to stop us and keep the doors closed and, and shut down the worship, and we had to go to virtual worship. So I say to my virtual worshipers, you are invited to join us, and if you don't feel comfortable, if you're not able, then we welcome you to be a part of this time uh, of celebration here at the New Calvary Baptist Church. I don't know about anybody else's church, but this is a special place of worship. This is a special house of God. Not because of me, not because of anybody, but because we know that God is in this place. We feel his spirit moving on the altar of our hearts. So you are welcome to join us virtually. Uh, just get out of bed. You don't have to take your pajamas off and put on anything. Just, just get ready for some good worship. Amen. Good singing and preaching and praising uh, the, the name of the Lord. Amen. Matter of fact, you might you just want to hit that share button right now and, and tell somebody else. Share it with somebody. Uh, they may not get it immediately because they may be in their own church service. But if you share the button, hit that button and share it with them, then they can check it out later on yes, in their own platform. So we thank God for those uh, opportunities of technology. Right now, uh, what I want to do is, is move into this time of worship. I'm asking if um, Deacon uh, Alfonso Plant would uh, prepare uh, to read our scripture for this morning. I'm asking if Minister Zena Cressy would prepare her heart uh, to lead us in this word, uh, in this time of worship with a word of prayer. Amen. God bless you uh, as you come. Good morning, church. Good morning. We'll be reading Matthew 1, 1825. <clears throat> Matthew 1, 1825. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When he, as his mother Mary, was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought of, th of these things, bold the angel, behold the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which <coughs> is con conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all 
this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did <clears throat> as the angel of the Lord had, had bidden him, and took unto his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Which was Matthew 1, 18, 25. May the Lord bless the reader and the hearer of his word. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just get our hearts and our minds ready for prayer. Let's saturate this place. Hallelujah. Let's release his glory right now before we go into the throne. Hallelujah. We ask God to forgive us before we even attach, come to the throne. Forgive us of anything that we have said, done, or thought that he can receive our prayers. Come on, saturate this place right now. Hallelujah. Saturate our hearts right now, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. God, we thank and we praise you for this day that you have made, God. Nobody made this day but you, God. God, have your way in each one of us, those that are here, God, those the ones that are listening, God that we may receive what thus saith the Lord, God. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your everlasting joy. We thank you for everything. You th we thank you for forgiving us of all things, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for taking us from one year to another year. We almost done, God. We thank you, Jesus. No isms, no schisms, God. We thank you that those that were sick, that we are now healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your mighty power over our life, God. We thank you for this day. We thank you that when we leave this place today, God, that you're going to do great and mighty things in our life. We thank you that we're going to always walk in your glory and your will and your way, God. We thank you for this day that the man of God is going to bring forth the word, God. And we're going to receive that word, and it's going to gurgitate in our mind and our hearts, and we're going to bring it forth whenever it is needed and necessary, God. We thank you that the just shall live by faith, God. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So, God, we thank you that we're going to always walk in your will, your way, and faith, believing that all things are possible with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
all over this place, somebody should be thanking God. You're not here by accident. Somebody should be thanking God for his keeping power, for his saving power, for his protecting power, for his healing power. Somebody should be thanking God. You got a place to go home to. You got a roof over your head. You got food on the table, clothes on your back. Hallelujah. You got a little money saved up in the bank. Got a job to go to on tomorrow. Got a little piece of car to start up in the morning. Oh, we thank you today, God, for all that you've done. For who you are. Hallelujah. For how you operate in our lives. How you look beyond our thoughts. That's enough right there to go crazy over. He looked beyond your mess, your habits, your sins. He looked beyond just to bless you, just to come and see about you. You still mean and God seeing about you. You still doing crazy stuff and God seeing about you. Won't speak to folk, but God will bless you anyhow. And God still pouring out blessings. What a mighty God. Oh, what a mighty and a merciful and a miracle working God we serve. He's worthy. Yes, he is. He's worthy to be praised. And you know, you know, there was a time in the old church. The saints would say, they wouldn't have to finish the statement, but they'd say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and the place would go crazy because everybody knew. The next part said, and all that he's done for me. We never got to this part. My soul. <laughs> my soul. <laughs> Down in here, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. You got a, you got a hallelujah that needs to cry out? It's in there. It's in there. You just got to pull it out. You know how you get it out? Wave your hand. Open your mouth and give God praise. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no harm. Ain't no harm in praising him. The harm is in keeping your mouth shut. The harm is in holding your peace. That'll hurt you. <laughs> my wife, my wife, when she sneezes, she she lets she don't let it come out. She'll do a little quiet sneeze, and I know it'll be all in here. You know, I said, you better let that out of you. That's going all that, all that sneezing that comes out. If you keep it in you, it's going in you. Let it out. And if you got a praise, if you got a thank you, Jesus, on the inside, if you got a hallelujah, you better let it out. All right. I, you'll feel better. Yes, sir. Things will get straightened out in your life. You got some blessings on hold because you won't let your praise out. God is waiting on just the bright praise from you for your breakthrough to happen. Yes, sir. 
Anybody need a breakthrough? <laughs> Don't lie now. Do you need a breakthrough? <laughs> Oh, come on now. <laughs> and if you don't think you need a breakthrough, I'm here to tell you, you need one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that's something about to go wrong, but you need that breakthrough. Oh, we bless the Lord today for this time of worship. I'm excited. I hope you get equally excited so that God will get full glory and honor out of our arrival here to this time of worship. Y'all excuse us on Facebook if you can't stand up and shout where you are. If you're in the car, hold on to the wheel and just do what you do. But we thank God for uh, the time that we have uh, to spend in worship. I thank God for a faithful congregation that has supported this church uh, for the last two years in lean times. In difficult times, you've been right there supporting us. And it has not been unrecognized. We, we, we did not miss that you were faithful. Uh, and we wanted to say thank you to all of our faithful members. And next Sunday, immediately following the uh, benediction, we will uh, bless the food upstairs. And then we're going to go downstairs and eat the food that we blessed. Amen. We're going to enjoy a time of fellowship just to say thank you. Just, just to let you know that uh, we appreciate uh, what you're doing. And we invite, if you haven't made it this Sunday, then make it next Sunday. If, you, if you're here this Sunday, don't miss next Sunday. Uh, because on the third Sunday after service, we're going to have some fellowship on the lower level. Amen. Sit down and break bread and enjoy each other's company. We, we will be continue our social distancing, uh, but God has blessed us to be able to uh, hold on these difficult months that we've gone through. And we thank God for uh, what he has done. Thank you for those who uh, have been giving by GiveLafly or Cash App or writing a check or bringing your money after the benediction. We appreciate all of that. And those who have been doing it, don't stop now. Don't, don't do it. You'll, you'll mess up your blessing, but uh, the work of the kingdom goes on. Amen. And he, he placed you here so that you can support the work that is going on in this branch of Zion's. If you want to know what's going on, go to your website, uh, New Calvary. Uh, de.org uh, and you can find out uh, what's going on at this church the upcoming events uh, the sermons you missed they're up there I believe uh, the Bible uh, lessons are there as well if not the outlines um, they're there amen thank God for that and we appreciate those who are supporting Sunday school uh, our Zoom Sunday school lessons continue every Sunday morning Amen. At 8.30 to 9.30. And some of y'all have to rush and get over here for the 10 o'clock service. Hey, but we thank God. And I know those Sunday school lessons go over. You can't tell me that y'all going to do it all in one hour. Amen. But God, is that's how the Holy Spirit operates. But when it's over, come on, either get online or come on over and be a part of that. And Amen. Wednesday Bible study is going strong. We thank you for your support uh, on Facebook. That's the only platform that we're using right now. We have not gone back in person for Facebook. Uh, you know, it's, it's nice. I have on my, my you know, nice top uh, when I'm on the camera, but I have on my sweatpants or my pajamas. So when we go back in person, I'm going to miss that. <laughs> Y'all don't know nothing about that, right? Praise God. Amen. But we're having a great time uh, looking uh, at the word of God. So I appreciate uh, what, what is going on. The, you, you should have on your screen uh, or in, in your hands a list of those who are celebrating birthdays in the month of December. We want to wish everybody a very happy birthday. 
if we're going to include your birthday gift with your Christmas gift just because of your misfortune of being born in <laughs> December. Uh, you're used to that by now, but we thank God uh, for our members who are uh, still with us. It's good. You know, it's, you know I, I, uh, I was talking to somebody in my family, and they did not want to tell me how old they were. I, I couldn't keep track of it, and they didn't want to tell me. I said, well, wait a minute now. You, you don't understand that you've been blessed with another year of life, Amen. of longevity, of, of blessings, uh, of, of, of being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So let us not worry about the numbers uh, as much as what God has for us. So uh, I've said all I need to say. I, I was somehow earlier this month, I was led to, to step aside on this Sunday uh, and to uh, make room for uh, one of our uh, members of our minister staff to preach. And I didn't have a full understanding of why, but I just was being obedient to the leading of the spirit. And I had somebody ready to go. Uh, and then I found out this morning why, because I woke up not, not really ready to do very much, not not feeling it, not not uh, having it in my spirit, and and then I understood that God said, "Look, I'm a little ahead of you, buddy. I I knew what was coming down the road, so I was I was making a way so that the people that I love over there at New Calvary would still be fed. So I thank God uh, for being obedient to the Spirit. We have a, a preacher. He's not a guest preacher. Oh my, no, not at all. He goes by many titles." Uh, some people call him Rev, some call him Doctor, others call him Professor. Uh, there are those who call him Chaplain, or he could be called the Dean. Uh, but we call him Reverend Dr. Steve Wright, Amen. the man of God. Amen. And he has proven himself to be a faithful soldier here at New Calvary. He said, all you got to do is call on him. And if he's able, he'll come and he'll do what you've asked him to do. So we, we are going to be blessed with the man of God Amen. in the person and in the spirit of Reverend Dr. Steve Wright, who's going to bring God's word to us in his own way. And we're going to receive it with joy and with a hearty amen. amen. Right now, praise team, I'm, I'm waiting on y'all to, to set the stage, to set the zone and the environment. And then we're going to continue having good church. Amen. If y'all with me, say amen. amen. God bless you.
myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Give myself away. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself away. I give myself. So I give you myself to can you. Use me. I give myself away. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself away. I give myself. So I give myself. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Give myself away. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So you can use me, give myself away. I give myself away. Just that sometimes we get in the way of what God's trying to do. Let's give him some praise this morning. I, I'm about to give myself away so that he can use me. Hallelujah. If you give yourself away, he'll speak a word to you this morning. He'll speak a word to you that you had not heard before. If you give yourself away, let's give ourselves away. Let's give God a praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Eternal God, our Father, we, we bow before you one more time. Lord, we thank you for how you've been so good to us. You've given us an opportunity to come into your house and to worship in spirit and in truth. And Lord, from where I stand right now, I'm looking at a full house. Now, we're socially distanced, but I'm looking at the New Calvary Baptist Church, minus those that are at home for whatever reason watching on, on Facebook and can't be here, but it looks good to see God's people. Hallelujah. Mask and all, you look mighty good. So we thank you, God. Thank you for this service. We thank you for moving on the man of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. We give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. We give honor to Pastor Oliver, Lady Oliver, and to all the ministers here. Can, can, can you ministers hold your hand up? Y'all all over the place today. And, and look, they would all come when I'm preaching, you know what I mean? But I praise God for you. We give honor to our deacons today, our deaconesses, our officers, members, and friends, those that are here in person and those that are watching on Facebook. Again, it is so good to be here to preach the word this morning. And I was telling my wife, you know, um, that God has a way of confirming things. Pastor Oliver talked to me a month ago about this Sunday. He said he didn't know why. And all week long, God has been showing me why. And then this morning, he didn't feel good. And, 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 and so he, he, he thinks that's why. But, but as we get into the sermon, you'll see that God was working all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. So we give... We, we, You've heard the scripture this morning. I want to lift for your hearing the 24th verse. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. Somebody once said that life is governed not so much by what happens to us, 
but rather how we react to life circumstances. How many know that as Christians, as believers, we're not exempt from negative and challenging things happening to us? I, I know it would be nice, it, but it would be nice because we confess Jesus, because we come to church, because we come to Bible study in Sunday school, because we sing in the choir, because we usher at the door and bring our tithes into the storehouse. It would be wonderful if we were spared the unpleasanties that life has to offer. Y'all pray with me. But unfortunately, it ain't so. Now, I know that's bad grammar, but it makes my case. Amen. Folks still, in spite of that, treat us badly. Folks still talk about us. Folk even lie on us. Folks still cheat on us. And, and, and folks still disappoint and let us down. Somebody say amen. amen. And sometimes the people that we love and cherish and respect are the ones that are perpetrators. And so I want to take a look at Joseph this morning. This, 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 this second Sunday of the Advent season as we prepare for Christmas. To know how he handled disappointment. How he handled heartbreak and how he handled letdowns. I want to look at Joseph's reaction to what I'm calling an unsettling matter. Are y'all going to pray with me? So in our reading of chapter 1, I'm starting to feel pretty good here now, Pastor. I'm going into the dean mode. Amen. In, 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 in chapter 1, the writer uses verses 1 through 17 to describe the lineage of Jesus Christ. No, no, no this matter, it doesn't begin with Adam. But it rather, he begins with Abraham, the father of the Jewish faith. For Matthew, the audience was to the Jews. And he wrote to persuade and to convince the Jewish people that Jesus Christ, although he did not come to set up his earthly kingdom, was nonetheless, he was the Messiah. And whenever possible, Matthew would connect it, he would connect Jesus to Jewish tradition. So he starts with Abraham. Bible students, work with me here. He starts with Abraham, and he goes to David, 14 generations. And from David to captivity, another 14 generations. And, and, then, and then from captivity to the coming of Christ, and subsequently, Matthew goes through 40 and two generations to get to Joseph. Y'all stay with me here. And then in verse 18 of our text, he introduces Joseph, who was espoused to Mary. You see, in actuality, they were married because the betrothal was legally binding. The arrangement, if you will, the contract, if you will, had already been agreed upon by their parents. They were in the one-year waiting period. And listen, watch this. He still lived with his parents, and she still lived with her parents. I hope I ain't hurting nobody here. And at the end of the one-year waiting period, they would have the formal celebration, move in together, and consummate the marriage. Things look pretty good from Joseph's perspective. But then God interrupts Joseph's plan. How many know that God is in control and that he can and he often will interrupt your plan? You've got your plans, and I've got my plans, but God says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he says that he has plans for you and I. For he says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And God's plan, watch this, it supersedes and it overrides our plan. It's good that you have a plan. If you don't have a plan, then you're just drifting through life, merely existing. You ought to plan to go to college. You ought to plan your career. You ought to plan to get married. You ought to plan to stay married. Somebody say amen. You ought to plan a family. You ought to plan on, 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 on retirement. Hallelujah. Have a plan, but don't hold fast to your plan so tight that you can't see God working. Listen, saints, God, with his infinite wisdom has designed your future, watch this, to arrive one day at a time. We just need to have patience as well as perseverance and trust God. So Joseph had a plan. His plan was to officially marry Mary. 
Hallelujah. Have the big Jewish celebration. Consummate the marriage. Have children and live happily ever after. But God intervened with an unsettling matter. Verse 18 says, and now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And so Joseph has this, this, this unsettling manner to deal with. And how many know that life will sometimes handle you uh, an unsettling manner? It's upset. Listen, it's unsettling when you lose your job. It's unsettling when you lose a loved one. It's unsettling when your children just won't act right. It's unsettling when you get a negative doctor's report. It's, it's, and so let's look at how Joseph handles this uh, unsettling matter, and perhaps we can glean from it during the coming days and nights. Is that all right? So first of all, he reacts to this unsettling matter with mercy. Verse 19 says, then Joseph, Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away. The, the King James says privily, but I'll break it down privately. He decides, he decides to react to this matter with mercy. And his mercy reaches past his circumstances. Watch this. His, his love, his life. His future legacy, as he knew it, had all just changed. But he didn't allow his circumstances to rule him. He didn't allow his circumstances to dictate his character. Can I pause there for a moment? I'm on the road all week long. I'm on Route 1 and up in Pike Creek and Hope Kesson, and folk cut me off, folk cuss me out. They do all kinds of things. And sometimes my character starts to wane. I'm just keeping it real, you know. But Joseph, look, going through what he was going through, didn't allow his circumstance to dictate him coming out of character. Somebody say amen. His mercy reached out to, Mar to Mary due to his personal righteousness. He was a just man. His mercy ran counter, counter to his culture. His culture said to Mary uh, to stone her to death. Deuteronomy 22 uh, says, if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then you shall bring the both out unto the gate of the city and you shall stone them with stones that they shall die. That was Old Testament. Y'all remember Jesus in chapter 8, in John chapter 8, when he says, uh, he says, he says, hold up, hold up. He says, you that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Joseph's mercy ran counter to his human nature. Human nature said, how could you do this to me? I'll never forgive you. You've done me wrong, and I want everyone to know what you've done. <clears throat> but because Joseph was a just man, a godly man, he has mercy. He understood the scripture that says, if a man or a woman be overtaken in fault, ye which are spiritual are to restore such a one in a spirit of meekness. And that's in Galatians 6 and 1. Now, you got to remember that Jesus hadn't said this yet. Hallelujah. He understood in a prophetic way that the scripture said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And he understood the word that said that all have sinned and fallen short. So, so he deals with some unsettling matter with mercy, and he plans to do it in private. So Joseph reacts. He reacts to this unsettling matter with mercy, but he also reacts by faith. And verse 20 and 23 says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. 
Verse 22 goes on to say, now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet of the Lord, saying, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God is with us. Joseph's reaction to the matter was to put Mary away with mercy and privately, but because he was a man of faith. And his faith was in God. So much so, watch this, God challenged his faith. Verse 20, and an angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream and says, and I'm paraphrasing this, he says, if you believe in me, Joseph, then hear this. Be not afraid to take Mary, your wife. You see, sometimes, saints of God, God's plans may seem unreasonable. I can see in my preacher's mind, Joseph saying, hold up, God, hold up, time out. Time out, God. You want, you want me to do what? <laughs> See, sometimes God's plans are, are unreasonable, and sometimes God's plans are unexplainable. For that which is conceived is of the Holy, the Holy what? That which is conceived is of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes it's unexplainable. Hallelujah. How, how does the Holy Ghost impregnate my marriage? His faith was challenged by God's plan. See, God's plan versus his, but his faith was also, watch this, encouraged by God's plan. God's plan for his people. Verse 21 talks about Israel was to save them from their sins. God's plan for him personally. Joseph, you're about to become the earthly father of the Messiah. It don't get much better than that. And then, and listen, God's plan for mankind, for he shall be called Emmanuel, hallelujah, which means God is with us. His faith was challenged by God's plan. His faith was encouraged by God's plan. His faith was confirmed by God's plan. And verse 22 and 23 had been prophesied by the prophet Isaiah over 700 years earlier. In Isaiah 7 and 14, you see, saints, God's word will not return void. Isaiah, the same Isaiah says, my word uh, shall, 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 shall be, be that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it should not return to me void. But it shall accomplish that which is pleased, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And because Joseph was a just man, and Joseph was a godly man, he knew the word of God. He got confirmation from the angel. You see, God speaks a word every time we're in worship. He speaks a word uh, that you need to hear. And he speaks a word that I need to hear. And sometimes it's a rhema word. It's a fresh word. And sometimes it's a word of confirmation. A word that already has been spoken to you, but he confirms it on Sunday morning by way of the preacher. And so all week long I've been I've been I've been I've been I've been working with this text and working with this text and working with this text. And all week long I've been getting confirmation and I come in here this morning and Reverend says, I'm not feeling good, Doc. Confirmation that I was supposed to be here to do what it is that he told me to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. And everything that could go wrong at home went wrong. The storm came yesterday. No, no, no computer. No, no. Oh, my God. How am I going to? No computer. No, no, look. Look, the, the, the morning, the morning uh, uh, meditation, you know, TV and no, no preachers. Hallelujah. Reach Radio got me here because I didn't have nothing. Hallelujah. And the Eagles ain't playing, so I got time to get it fixed. Joseph got a confirmation on what God had already spoken to the prophet Isaiah. So he reacted with mercy, and he reacted by faith, and lastly, he reacted by obeying. Verse 24, verse 24, help me out here. Hallelujah. Verse 24 says, then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. And he took Mary unto him as his wife. Joseph's faith was followed by obedience. He did what the angel of the Lord told him to do. James says that faith without works is dead. In other words, show me your faith 
by what you do, not what you say. See, we can't say he's Jehovah Jireh and be worried about provisions. We, we can't say he's Jehovah Rapha and not believe that, that he's going to heal us. We can't say he's El Shaddai and, and not believe that he's all sufficient and he's the almighty. We've got to live like he is who he says he is. Joseph's obedience would cost him, though. It would cost him ridicule. It would cost him separation from the world. But it would bring him into the will of God. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 As I close this Sunday, I just stopped by to say, New Calvary, I know it's Christmas time. Hallelujah. I know it's time to deck the halls with balls of holly. I know it's fa la 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 But I need you to know that as Christians, sometimes you and I are going to have to deal with some unsettling matters. It may happen in our cars. It may happen in our homes. It may happen on the job. It may happen at the mall. It might even happen, hallelujah, in the church hall. But what you and I need to know is not so much where it happens. Not so much how it happens, but how we react when the unsettling matters come into our lives. Do we conduct ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, or do we forget who we are in Christ? Can I get a witness? Uh, hallelujah. Joseph was a good example, but I stopped by to let you know that Jesus is a better answer. Because around 33 years after Joseph's unsettling manner, after turning water into wine, after, 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 hallelujah, after healing the blind and healing the sick, after raising the dead, after feeding the hungry and giving living water to those who thirst, Jesus had to deal with some unsettling matters. It was unsettling when they tempted him in the wilderness for 40 days by the devil. It was unsettling when they lied on him. Brother Deacon, it was unsettling when Judas betrayed him. Pastor Oliver, I need you to know it was unsettling when Peter denied him. Hallelujah. It was unsettling, Deacon, when they whipped him. It was unsettling when they spat upon him. It was unsettling when they dragged him from kangaroo court to kangaroo court. Somebody say amen. And then it was unsettling when they nailed him into the cross on a hill called Calvary. Ah, but the story doesn't end yet because it was unsettling matter when they buried him in the tomb for three days. But on the third day morning, Jesus settled the matter once and for all. Can I get a witness, sir? Uh, when he rose from the dead, defeated death, hell, and the grave. So I stopped by this Christmas season to say, let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's emulate the one who we celebrate. Let's show some love this season. Let's show some, some, some mercy this season, some grace this season, some forgiveness this season. Let's spread some peace this season, for he is the Prince of Peace. Let's show our faith by our works. If ever there was a time that this world needs some love, needs some grace, needs some mercy, needs some peace, is now. And that's how we handle, hallelujah, an unsettling matter. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, that's how we do it. That's how we roll. That's how Christians roll. Let me love on you. I don't want to curse on you. Let me love on you. That's how we roll. And I'm convinced that when the world sees how we react, they get envy and want some of that. And that opens the door to tell them about Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. As we rest on our feet all throughout this place. Hallelujah. 
be careful when you leave because the devil will send some matters your way. He'll, he'll do that. He'll, he'll try to snatch that word right out of you. You know, and, 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 I'm, and I'm saying you've been, you, you've been armed for how to react. And I'm convinced that when you react the way Christ would want us to, he says, that's my boy. That's my girl. Yeah, th those are mine. That's how we do it. Hallelujah. My father used to tell us, he said, Steve, come here. He used to come here. That ain't how rights do it. You know, I, I didn't know what that meant, but that ain't how rights do it. And now I hear my kids say, hold up, hold up. That, that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't how rights do it. <laughs> Listening to my father. We listen to our father. Perhaps you're here today and you've not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody watching on Facebook Live. It's not too late. It's not too late to participate in the celebration of the birth of our Savior. It's not too late. Hallelujah. So we offer you Jesus Christ. We offer you salvation, for there is no name given by men which, hallelujah, shall save other than the name of Jesus. Are you here? Are you here? I'm determined to keep Christ in Christmas. Hallelujah. We need him. We need peace in the city. We need Jesus. Hallelujah. We need love. Kindness. Humility. Hallelujah. We praise God that everybody here is saved. So here is a challenge when you leave here today. Don't wait till tomorrow, but today, just know when unsettling matters come your way that we don't react out of character. We don't have to have the last word. Jesus already spoke. He settled the matter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance and give thee peace. And the peace of God, which passed all understanding, shall keep thy heart and thy soul through Christ Jesus. Henceforth, now and forever, let us all say, Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Until the next time.